Let's give it up for Telark recording artist, the Debbie Davies Band.
Yeah, you know it's just this life, darling, that gets in our way. do a couple of tunes. We got a new CD coming out and it'll be out at the end of this month so I'm going to do a couple of new ones from that.
touch it No politician to Nothing in the world Gonna take the blues Hi, I'm Dave O'Neill, and this is the Blues Played Special. You've just been watching the front end of the set of Debbie Davies at the Berlin Blues Fest, and uh, I'm sure you're entertained, and we've got even more entertainment for you tonight with uh, Debbie here in the studio. Debbie, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Dave. Fun day, great weather again at the Berlin Blues Fest. Man, summer. <laughs> summer has arrived. Yeah, it's early summer for them as well, too. That was pretty hot that day, too. Yeah, oh yeah. Got to be tough up on the stage with all that heat. Did it bother you at all? That day didn't bother me that much. When it gets higher than that and it's real humid, that can take me out. Humidity is worse for me. Heat is just heat. Yeah, yeah but you're really moving up there, too. So you're, you're doing aerobic exercise on the stage. Yeah, there's a lot of adrenaline flowing. And definitely you're kind of at your peak, you know, as far as energy. So you can, you can get overheated. Well, you look composed, though. That's good. <laughs> so um, I'd heard that the keyboard player was uh, from Country Joe and the Fish? Yeah, David Bennett Cohen. Uh, he's an original member of that band, and they actually are still doing shows, or are kind of newly again doing shows. So he's been dividing his time between my band and uh, Country Joe. Wow, you're well connected. How did you come across him? He lives in New York. Okay. So, you know, it's just a network of players that we all end up meeting each other and working together and swapping around and... Yeah. So, um, he wasn't on the latest All I Found, right? No, that's Bruce Katz. Out of Boston. Yeah, who's done a lot of work with me. I, I love Bruce. He's kind of the man in the Northeast and yeah. he's uh, recorded, I think, three of my CDs with me and we've done a lot of live shows, but he's just so busy on his own that he can't be a constant member of my band. Can't be everywhere. No, wish he could be. So who else was on the stage with you? Don Castaño has been my drummer for like 10 years and he's also one of the primary songwriters for the group and AJ Hager on bass is, uh, he's been with me I think for seven years. So we call him the Funk Meister. <laughs> yeah, well it's a talented band that's for sure. That's Thank the crowd you. was digging it as well, too, so. Yeah, I'm real grateful. I, I'm really proud of my now. So all I found, uh, first track is what? Made Right Here in America? Made Right in the USA. Made in the USA. I yeah. Well, difference. Yeah, I really like that tune a lot. Thank you. It really says a lot about uh, what's going on in society right now where everything's being outsourced except for the blues. Yeah, well, we, we couldn't help but write about stuff on this CD that, um, that we've been observing and that's been affecting us, you know, as we, because we travel all around, you, we see all kinds of people, talk to people, and uh, blues is basically a working class person's music, you know. I like to call us working class professionals because our job, the nature of it is very, you know, working class and physical and moving stuff and driving and, you know, whatnot, sweating. Sweating. But we have to be professional at what we do, so, um, 
it's just a, a part of life that, that we feel real, you know, entrenched with people that are working hard for a living. And, and my heart goes out to everybody right now that's been, you know, losing all their jobs. So Outsourced. Yeah. Well, hopefully we won't outsource the blues. Hopefully not. So this is the new disc, but, you know, I know with, with every artist, it's new now, but it's not new to you. You've been working on this for a while, correct? Actually, now it's been about a year that we started uh, first writing the tunes for this CD. We recorded it in December, and then the record label wanted to have about a six-month lead time to get all the artwork together and to send, you know, promotional stuff out ahead of time. So by the time it hits the streets, you've got articles coming out, you know, papers and magazines and stuff like that. Wow. Oh, so. Yeah, speaking of articles, I just uh, read the article in Blues Review on you. So I guess uh, their promotion material is getting out there then. Yeah, timing, real important, you know. So we're just hoping and keeping our fingers crossed that people hear about the record and pick it up and give it a listen. Yeah. How many cuts did you write? Uh, it's about a 50-50 split on this CD okay. between myself and Don. And I'm really happy that it's an all-original CD. I mean, we've done a lot of covers in the past, and of course the last one I did was a, a tribute to John Mayall. So this this was where I wanted to be on this CD was completely original by the band. Wow, John Mayall. Speaking of which, too, um, you played with John Mayall way back, isn't that your early career? You were uh, played on one of his discs that was Grammy nominated too. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, I don't know. I did. Um, I did a rhythm track for him on a record called A Sense of Place. Okay. And at that time I was working with his wife in an all-female band called uh, Maggie Mayall and the Cadillacs. We were the opening band a lot for John on, on his uh, West Coast road tours. So, and he, you know, John Mayall's Blues Breakers and Eric Clapton, my f first blues influences when I was a kid. So, he's kind of... Um, many times in my life been an influence and a, then he became a like a mentor, a real supporter. Yeah. So I, I wanted to pay back. Yeah, he's helped a lot of, or started a lot of great careers too. Yours and Eric's and Walter Trout and a ton of them too. Tons of them, Mick Taylor and Coco Montoya and That's right. Peter Green and the, the guys at, you know, Fleetwood Mac. So. Yeah. I was talking with Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac, is it what the original name of the band? Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac, I think it was. Was it? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a way little back. bit, yeah, a little bit before my time. <laughs> I'm but, showing my age here. <laughs> okay, but I know that, uh, you know, all those folks uh, had played with John Mayall's Blues Breakers early on. So John kind of mentored, and he's got great collections of records and tapes and videos. And he, when he likes an artist and befriends you, he's always turning you on to stuff, you know. And so he did that a lot with me. And uh, I, I really appreciated it. You know, it means so much. Yep, it's good having a mentor. Mm -hmm. And Albert Collins, he was another mentor, wasn't he? Oh, man, yeah. Well, I, I went on the road with Albert for three years, so um, he's my biggest mentor. And, um, you know, right here in my heart. Yeah. So. I love seeing him play. Unbelievable. I, I saw him six months before he died at too young of an age. Yeah, well, he was already, I'm sure, a little ill at that point in time. Yeah, well, he still he still went out to the crowd, took that Telecaster, and 50 feet out with, with I mean, old school. You know, yeah, cabled oh, in. yeah. He wasn't wireless. He was wired. Yeah, I know. Well, my memories of Albert just get sweeter, you know, and stronger the more I'm in this business and, and the older I'm getting. It was such an incredible experience playing with that band and getting to know him. He was very soulful. It played right from the heart and passed it along as well, too. You must have picked that up from him. I can only hope. <laughs> I, I know that I had never, when I was on stage with Albert, I had never been on stage with anyone like that or that caliber of a band that was just so powerful. And uh, I just, you know, seeing everything, being on the road with someone and going through all kinds of stuff like breakdowns, you know, the vehicle breaks down and no sleep and you know all the stuff that goes on and then seeing Albert every night pull it out like that pull out all the stops and give it all he's got it, that affected me more than anything else and that was what 88 him. to 91 for those years yeah okay. 
And so that led you up to what, 93 was your first disc, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I went out on my own and was doing my own thing and, you know, got the record deal and kept on going. First of many, though. So how many discs did you uh, come out with? I think I have, including one that I put out myself first before I had a record deal. I've got 10 now. And that includes like two that are compilation CDs. One I did with uh, Kenny Neal and Tab Benoit, Good Homesick company. for the Road. Yeah, and then another one I did with uh, Otis Grand and Anson Funderburg. Wow. And that was really fun. I don't have either of those. I have to get those. I suppose you can still get them. I'm sure you can. Yeah. And so, so then you also worked on what? Blind Pig, mm -hmm. Shauna Key, and what? You're on Telark now? Yeah. So eight with those three uh, record labels. That's that's quite a discography. Well, it's it's starting to grow. <laughs> <laughs> so the new one's out now too. So you're thinking about uh, the next one at this point? Or are you taking a break? Well, I, I don't think I'm taking a break. I think I'm working still on this one. It's so new. It's only been out uh, two weeks. So we're we're promoting it. They're, we're doing a lot of things to promote the record, and uh, we'll be going on a little road trip this weekend, you know, uh, Friday through Tuesday. And uh, we just we just kind of keep on, keep on going. And, you know, you, you're always kind of gradually getting ideas for tunes. And uh, you never write them all until the pressure's on. But you start them, you get little snippets and ideas. So there's a whole plan for this promotional tour. How long does the, the promotional tour take place? Is it? I think we'll be promoting the CD for at least the first four months that it's out, okay. if not long. Well, as long as we can, we'll, it'll be the new record until people don't think it's new anymore. So I'm guessing you're going to do the East Coast because that's where you live. Are you going to do your old home front, uh, the West Coast at all? We are. We're going to head out there in October and do okay. a cross-country tour. We just did one in um, April, all the way there and back. And we'll do that again in October and November. So, so how many how many gigs is that going to be throughout uh, the rest of the year? Throughout the rest of the year, I don't know because they're still being Planned. booked. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I do? What about 200 a year? It's probably a little less right now. It was 200, but a lot of the blues clubs across the country have gone under, had a hard time. So. Um, it, we're down to about 150 a year. That's still a lot of work. That's it is. It's because you're driving more, a, many more days than you're actually performing. So. You think, but if you had a nine-to-five job where you, you know, drove five minutes to work, you still have 200 days uh, a year that you're working, and the rest is vacation or weekend. You're doing as much as you would be working right down the street. Oh, I, you probably shouldn't tell me that. <laughs> you're going to work less than that. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good. So, so you were born in L.A., as I recall, and, and grew up in Tarzana. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how did you end up on the East Coast? Well, at the time I got my record deal with Blind Pig, I had management out here. Um, Blind Pig was telling me that their biggest sales were on the eastern seaboard. And if you can picture living in Los Angeles and, as a tour base, it's, it's a little difficult because the whole left side of the country, the whole western half, uh, it's not real populated and drives can be so far and so long it's really hard to keep your calendar filled. So living on this side you can tour the northeast, the southeast, the midwest, the north midwest fairly easily and then twice a year go out to the west. Also um, we play in Europe and this is a much easier flight from this, LA, uh, it's yeah. it's a big time jet lag, so yeah, right. a lot of reasons like that, just more work. Have an LA, uh, I mean a, a Europe tour planned as well too, or is that? Well, the, we were in Europe the whole month of March, and uh, I think we'll be going back around the same time next year. Any special countries? You doing Germany, England, France, or you doing the, the? England, really not much at all. They don't have. Uh, the economy over there, as far as the club scene, is it's not good, and it's really hard for them to bring people over. A couple of festivals that they do, you know, but as far as people touring the United Kingdom, it's it's not done too much wow. by the blues artists. We play a, 
Europe. I think I've played 17 countries in Western Europe. And I have played England, but mostly with Otis Grand, my buddy, and of course when I was with Albert Collins. What's your favorite country over in uh, Europe to tour? I kind of favor Spain. I just, probably because I speak some Spanish. Oh. It looks a lot like California. It's it dry, huh? It, yeah, <laughs> and I feel at home with that. So we have a lot of fun there. They're they're really uh, lovely people and very kicked back. So good food too. And that's another thing to me. That's like the best food. Not that there isn't a lot of great food to be found over there, but Spain rocks. Yeah, France is good. England's a little weak on food, but. <laughs> So you were born on the West Coast. Yeah. You're on the East Coast now, but am I picking up a Texas twang in your in your voice? I, you know, people say that maybe because I spent all that time with Albert and was down there a lot, you know, and I have so many guitar buddies from down there, but I don't think so. Although, you know, some people think that there's a California accent. See, I don't think that either, but I don't know. So how much time did you spend in Texas? With Albert, uh, it was more like just hang time. Yep. And I've recorded a couple of scenes down there. So you just, you know, Albert's dad, until he passed away, lived in Houston. Okay. So Albert would, if we were on the road, he would take a lot of time off in Houston. So we would sometimes park there for a little <laughs> while. Oops. And yeah, and Austin, of course, was a big blues scene for years, It unfortunately, isn't right now, but at least when I was out there with Albert and coming up learning the blues, Austin was the place. And you also mentioned too that you uh, recorded an album there too. Didn't you record with Double Trouble? I did, yeah. We did um, a record called Tales from the Austin Motel and uh, literally that's where I was staying at the Austin <laughs> Motel. So, and that's where all the musicians stay, so it's kind of a wild place. I'll have to check um, it out. Yeah, it's really fun. And right across the street is a club called the Continental, which is one of the blues clubs down there. And uh, I was experience, and of course, getting to play with those guys. I had met them when I was on the road with Albert. We did a lot of shows with Stevie. And um, when he passed away, I was playing at a couple of benefits for him. That Double Trouble was the rhythm section. And I remember thinking when I was playing with them, wow, these guys have a groove. I would love to record with them someday. And then it happened. We made it happen. So you're, you're on the promotional tour. You just finished up the disc. What else you got in the future? Well, I've got a lot of ideas. And I just hope I can make them happen. Uh, I'm working on uh, putting together another instructional guitar video. and. We're going to probably have a live CD coming out and, you know, stuff in the making like that. And other than that, just trying to keep keep on keeping on with the blues. Yep, and keeping the blues alive. Yeah. Well, enough talk. You know, we, we don't want to take away from this next set of Debbies. You know, you saw the first one, you got a chance to not only learn about Debbie, the blues scene, but you learned about European economics. So how <laughs> complete of a show is that? Don't go anywhere. More music from Debbie coming up. Keep watching.
This is a little, a uh, little different style, but another one from the new CD.
right, we're gonna do a little Albert Collins love here. All right. Well, if you love me like you say, baby, why you treat me like you do? Oh, you love me like you say, why you treat me like you do? Well, I ain't no fool. I'm cool, I know the rules. Said you never run around. Said you never stay out late, boy. Oh, you never run around. Said you never stay out late. Let me tell you now, baby. Background singers are here. Oh, yeah. David Bennett Cohen. enjoyed our show people I never end a show without saying hi to my pop Mr. Albert Collins keep the memory alive want to give it up for my band this gentleman on the keyboard is an original member of Country Joe and the Fish ladies and gentlemen give it up for David Bennett Cohen Also known as the Funkmeister. You know, you can't stand too close to him. Give it up for A.J. Hager. Yeah, and back on the drums, doing double duty tonight. Backing up Mr. Ronnie Earl earlier, but he's on the road with me full time and writes a lot of our songs. Give it up for Don Castaño. Yeah. 